You're listening to LeaderCast, episode 153. Welcome to LeaderCast, Transforming Missions podcast with Tim Bias and Sarah Thomas, providing you with insights and resources you need to lead a movement of Jesus followers. And today we're giving thanks for relationships. You may be saying, Sarah, You all have been giving thanks for relationships throughout all of these, but today we want to specifically pause and be thankful and give thanks for relationships. So let me remind you that we this is the fifth in a series of six episodes around giving thanks. You can find the four previous episodes at transformingmission.org forward slash podcast. Look for the image marked giving thanks. Sarah, as we were starting this podcast, I had in my mind, we're at the beginning of Advent, and why are we still focusing on giving thanks? Well, part of that reason is we're in the people business. And what I'm thinking is, what other time of year are we focused on people more than Christmas? Yeah, absolutely. And I would add to that, not that that's not enough of a reason, But giving thanks isn't just confined to one day in November or the month of November. We've been inviting you to pause for moments of gratitude since October. And our invitation to you today is that we hope that you will continue to pause and remember with gratitude all that God is doing in your midst. And we've come to a time of the year that we could actually say that over the last nine months, when we weren't able to be together, you found a way to be in relationship with one another. You've kept people at the center of your focus. You've used phone calls. You've visited on front porches. You've met in parks. You've gathered in parking lots. And yes, you've even met on Zoom. You've found ways to keep the relationships uh, alive and healthy. So as you're thinking and living into this Advent season and preparing for Christmas, we know Christmas is going to look different this year. We're thankful that you're continuing to focus on the people in your church community and in your local community, recognizing the gifts and graces of the people that make the church the church, and recognizing the needs and assets of the people in your community, and all that you have to offer the community, and all that the community has to offer to you. So, Sarah, before we pray, I'd like to say that I'm learning more and more that the people who are in my life help me become more who God created me to be. So that's one of the reasons I'd be thankful for relationships. And maybe... Just maybe that's one of the gifts of Christmas. So think about back in March. I can still remember it. It was March 12th, March 13th. It was a Friday. That was the last day that I walked into a Kroger grocery store to do my grocery shopping. Since then, it's been picked up and put in my, my trunk for me. There are a lot of people in my life that I can pause the relationships in my life that I can pause and give God thanks that their very presence in my life not only helped me to navigate something that none of us have ever had to navigate before, but when we were told to stay at home, (laughs) we continued to be in relationship. When we were told we couldn't do things that we normally do in the spring, like get together and celebrate Easter. And maybe Christmas is looking the same way for you and your community. Who are the people in your life that you want to pause in this moment and simply say, God, thanks. Thank you for bringing them into my life and reminding me that you are present with me in and through them. What you've just said is extremely important, but I want to add one thing to it. As you pause to give thanks, however you've been communicating with people over these few months, send a text, 
or an email or even snail mail and let them know that you're giving God thanks for them. This would certainly be one way, not only being thankful for the relationships, but you would actually be celebrating Christmas. Each time we come to Advent, I always take a minute and pause and think, yeah, how did we celebrate last year? What what did we what did we do last year that because there's always something for me that marks Advent and Christmas as just a little bit different. There's some some way that it gets expressed. And let me remind you that last Advent, Tim and I did a series of podcasts and blogs on the characters of Christmas. And each one of those characters embody specific relationships in the scriptures that we are reading and and celebrating and worshiping from in this season. So if you're thinking more about the frustrations of relationships right now than giving thanks for the relationships in your life, you might head back to that series of blog posts and podcasts that we did and explore the characters of Christmas and be reminded again of how God's presence is embodied in the scripture and the gifts that each of the characters bring to us. Sarah, with that, why don't we end this episode with prayer? Oh God, we're grateful for the people you've put into our lives, the relationships that have grown and deepened, and for the way you're making us more who we are because of the people with whom we live, work, and and play. For this day, as we offer ourselves in thanksgiving, we also give ourselves to you so that all we say and do will bring you glory and work for the good of the people that you've given us to love and serve. We offer this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me remind you that you can head back to the show notes page at transformingmission.org forward slash podcast. Look for the image marked giving thanks. And on that image, it will link you to the previous podcast episodes that I was just mentioning from last year and the blog posts around the characters of Christmas, as well as the previous four episodes in this series. Now go lead a movement of Jesus followers. Bye for now.